Welcome everybody to another episode of Mortgage Insiders Edition. My name is Kim Nguyen and with myself as always is Preet Singh. We're mortgage brokers out in Vine Group and today we've got a special guest and we're going to be talking all about things that you need to know when working with a realtor. And our special guest is Amanda Hancock and she is an experienced realtor in the province of Alberta. So uh, today we will basically talk about many misconceptions, myths, or general ideas where uh, when you are basically as a client, you're looking for a property out of the market, how a realtor can help you make that transition smoother, how they can add value to your daily daily life. That's the topics we are going to discuss. So I yeah. guess like maybe starting off here, Amanda, like I know the biggest thing that Pre and I see all the time when we're helping clients with pre-approvals is the number one question is clients will be like, okay, you know, if I work with a realtor, because we always stress when you're buying a home, you got to work with a professional, right? Don't go unrepresented. It is a little bit risky, especially if it's your first home. But the question that we get is, is there a fee when working with a realtor? So what does that look like on your end? Yeah, no, uh, that's a really popular question that a lot of people always wonder when you're on the buyer side there is no fee to the buyer it comes from the commission from the seller so the seller pays for the seller's agent and the buyer's agent and for their commission and it's good to know and like i know sometimes you know with that being said as well too like what does the journey look like when you're working with an actual realtor on the buying side right like like walk us through what that would look like yeah, so right off the bat is it's really good to have a kind of a quick initial conversation to learn a little bit about the realtor and learn also for the realtor to learn about you and your client and their needs. Um, so I like to have a quick conversation, just an initial meet and greet essentially, where I get to know the generalized information. So is this your first home? Have you bought before? Are you new to Calgary? Do you know the areas? Where would you like to be? And then the type of home that they're looking for. And then I like to set up a face-to-face -face where we go through the entire buying process. So we start from, hey, this is where we are now. We're just meeting. We're figuring out what you like. Have you talked with the mortgage broker? Have you been pre-approved? Okay, great. If not, then we, you know, trail them off to where we need to go with that. Um, and then we narrow it down and we look at budget, we look at detached, detached, town home, if they need a yard, if they have dogs, family, wherever they need to be. And then when we have that information, we have access to the Calgary Realtors MLS. So it's this massive portal online. It's like a virtual office workspace where we create a search for our client. So we put in all of that information, we can modify and change as we go. And then it basically sends emails as the listings come up that match the client's criteria. And then we go through those and the client can actually like or trash can or comment, I can comment on them as well. And then once they've gotten through a good little chunk, usually the first day is a lot, there's quite a bit of homes that get sent out. Um, once they have about 405 that they want to go and see, then we set up a viewing. And then so we go and see any home that they want to go and see. And then as we go through that process of the showings, the client figures out what they want and what they don't want. And it could be totally different from the first time that we had that conversation. But that's kind of the way that it goes. And that's how you know is by getting out and seeing any different property that you want. And then after that, that's when we get into more of the real help that the realtor provides as well, right? With the guidance of the local market, the understanding of, you know, today we are in a really competitive market. So understanding what that looks like, how we need to approach an offer when they do decide they want to write, then we go into the negotiations. Then there's a bunch of different other things that can be involved like conditions. And so home inspection, financing, condo review, and we're just there to help guide every step of the way up until the possession day mm -hmm. where we get to hand over the keys. And then we're even there afterwards as well. And the, the biggest thing I liked about Amanda, your process is when you talked about pre-approvals, because that's the really, uh, hard, hardest topic on my radar always to get a pre-approval and get at least a preliminary look at the documentation without wasting your time and the mortgage broker's time. So I always recommend that 
upfront. And I'm, I'm glad you talked about that. So that that is a very key piece, right, Kim? Like, would you? Yeah. Yeah, right. So I definitely agree. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Like that is super important. And then one thing that I want to point out as well, too, is that, you, you know, um, one thing that Pri and I have seen often is that sometimes clients, when they're working with a realtor, they're scared that the realtor will only send listings that they currently mm -hmm. have. Right. And it's not a full database. So, again, you know, you just broke the myth where if you do set them up on kind of like a little search system, it's basically every property that's listed. Right. It's just yes. not within your firm. It's basically everything. Um, I think the only exception to that would be new builds. Is that correct? Uh, it, some new builds will be posted on there. If, yeah. So if a realtor is representing the builder, uh, mm -hmm. the new build will be listed on the MLS. But then the um, once the offer has been accepted, it gets transferred within 24 hours to the builder's name. But we are still there throughout that process as well. Yeah, and I, in my daily life, we do recommend, and I'm pretty much sure Kim does the same, we do recommend our clients, even if they are buying a new build property, a pre-sale property through a builder, to uh, take their realtor along with them, because that realtor has more experience in the same uh, community, the market and everything, even with the pricing, and the realtor can help them with many different things, even if the client is buying um, basically a new build property mm -hmm. and and the client doesn't need to pay to you as a realtor uh, yeah. that's a other bigger thing uh, plus the realtor gets a second uh, sorry the client gets a second opinion second set of eyes uh, looking at those paperwork especially those builder paperwork are like enormous like there are so many paperwork other than i i know a real estate transaction on on a uh, so, sorry resale side could be like six pages right, or maybe 10 pages max, but on the builder side, those paperworks are like gigantic sometimes, right, so you have to go through all those details, and uh, we always recommend our clients that they should take a professional realtor along with them when they're going to see a builder office, right, so yeah. Yeah, it can be a really positive time in people's life, looking to buy something, um, it can be a really stressful time, it mm -hmm. can be the hardest time that they've gone through with, you know, certain circumstances, maybe leading up to why they have to move. But, you know, a good realtor will always make the process good, no matter Most. what is happening. Yeah. And we're here to shoulder all of this, like shoulder all the steps and all the help throughout the process too. Right. Yeah. You simplify those things. Like somebody uh, talked about and asked me, what is an RPR? Like a client yeah. in a private sale was asking me, what is an RPR? Because now the realtor is, uh, sorry, the lawyer is asking for that. And I, I circled back to him and I said, like, if you had a realtor, you would not be coming to me to ask this question, right? You would be going back to your uh, realtor in that case, or the realtor would have already addressed this thing day one yeah. when you were writing this offer, right? So... Now, and that's at the end when you're exactly. meeting with the lawyer. So that can cause a lot of stress. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you definitely, the lawyer, uh, the realtors basically take away that pain mm -hmm. that the sellers can go through at a later stage. And I understand some clients may have reservations not to use a realtor, but we always recommend a realtor because a realtor, just like a mortgage broker, is a professional licensed person across that province. And he or she has the full kind of, Oh, oh, the onus is on the realtor when you hire them, not even hire them, when you engage them, they even before uh, you basically hire them, still the onus is on them to give you the right information, right? And that basically, especially when you're buying, that is always uh, helpful, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we actually have um, in one of the first few steps that we do is it's a consumer relationship guide. So it explains mm -hmm our role to our clients and our responsibilities to our clients as well. So it really helps the client understand why we are here and what we do and to hold us to a regard. Mm -hmm. And I think like the one thing too is that like with any profession, right? Not all realtors are created equally. Not all mortgage brokers are created equally. So I think the purpose of this is that, you know, if you're listening to this and you're hearing that perhaps your professional isn't following these right steps, like, you know, it might be time to kind of search elsewhere, right? Because there are standards that realtors have to uphold too. Mm -hmm. The other thing too, I find is that having a realtor on hand is that they are a 
a main source for other things such as like if you need home inspection or if you need somebody to help you with um, general contracting or developing basements like again like you've got somebody who's got a contact or uh, like a, a bunch of networks uh, that can help you out with the after closing items right and and again like we've seen so many of stories where clients go unrepresented and there's issues that come up like I know pre you and I we've been in the business for over over a decade and I know like I had a client who bought a home from Kijiji and let me tell you there were issues right like again they didn't think about getting an inspection they didn't think about like um you know talking about little things like hey what about these attached goods in the home right mm -hmm. because when you're writing a contract between two people and there's no realtors involved like you got to understand like again unless the other person is a, a lawyer or something like that like you're really you're you're really on the hook and there's a lot of risk that comes into play because there's a lot of terminology and there's a lot of things that can just go underneath and when you close on the home it's too late right if there's issues that come up it's too late the transaction is done and you don't want to be in that situation it's pretty challenging yeah, yeah and, and moreover like the lenders basically when we submit an application to a lender we have to specifically write down in our notes that this is a private sale Right. We have to highlight that because the lender has to uh, kind of add on extra conditions for private sale, like title search, uh, name of the solicitor on the other end. They have to call them verbally and make sure all these details are a OK. So the power of realtor is missing in a private sale in, in, in this example. Right. And that now the lender also has to follow extra steps, which means it, uh, what it uh, basically tells me is even the lenders are scared or they are extra cautious when there is a private sale, whether it's an arms length transaction or non arms length transaction. And as soon as the MLS listing or the realtor comes into the picture, none of these questions are asked. Like the, the, yeah. the lenders don't even question these, the, the authority of the whole system uh, that a licensed realtor is involved in this transaction. It's good for listeners to kind of know because unfortunately, like the stuff sometimes isn't available online, right? Sometimes it's not publicly like notified or whatnot. So it's always good to kind of, you know, shed some light onto this. But um, yeah, Amanda, any, any final words then, right? For somebody who's in the market right now, especially the, since the conditions are so tight like this is kind of a, especially in Alberta but again it is getting and heated up in uh, like other parts of Canada as well too like do you have any suggestions for those who are looking to work with the realtor or on the fence like any final words yeah um, I do think it's important like you would interview different um, like a job would interview their prospects right it's important to interview a realtor and make sure <laughs> that you guys are gonna jive and meet their needs right like different realtors are really great at condos at residential at acreages so getting to know and looking up and always asking if they can show you mm -hmm. how they achieve certain things right um like we are working pretty much not 24 7 but we are there quite a bit we're looking on our matrix we're looking on Kreblink. we're following through with all of the data all of the statistics so in a very competitive market like this it is really important to know what the house two doors down from the one you're about to put an offer and sold for mm -hmm. because we can help you and you know be competitive but still protect you and, and make sure that you're not going to be at risk for anything Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. like one thing that we talked about before, too, is just like in a market like this where it's so heated, you, you need to find a professional that will come up with other creative solutions. Right. I know the one thing you were mentioning is that sometimes you look into community pages, right, just to see is there anything upcoming. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes if you like if you're a client looking to get a home in this competitive market, you got to find somebody who's willing to put in the extra effort. Right. Because exactly. it's challenging right there. I know pre same thing for you, too. Right in Edmonton so yeah yeah you know what I would like to add on for our listeners and viewers is uh, the, the realtors profession adds on so many other minute details when you are going through that transactions like CMA competitor market analysis mm -hmm. yes we talk about that but it's a detailed report and it's it's a, it's an authenticated number than doing basically talking to your neighbor or your friend or or somebody at work what do you think about this property? And, and he or she is not a realtor and does not have that data behind that analysis, right? And then it basically gives you more 
input, detailed input, that what the number would look like. What, where should you start negotiating with the seller? Or even if you are basically selling the property, how you should basically present your property in a market through a realtor, right? Not only the, the, the realtors are helping you to buy the property, they also help you to sell the properties too. And, mm. and some some realtors are very much focused on seller side. They know all the nitty gritties and focused on the selling point. And, and I, I do see some posts on Facebook all this time that this property was sold in X amount, least number of days, at some higher percentage of, of the listed price, right? So how cool is that if you are basically hi hiring or engaging a realtor and not doing the whole paperwork or the speed work at your own, right? That that basically really adds the value of, of the system. I always say, like, if you are sick, would you stay at home and do all these things at your own or whether you go to see a doctor, right? So it's the same thing, going going to see a specialist or a doctor and getting the full advice, right? So, yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, we're here to help. And, mm -hmm. you know, my my slogan is it's your, your, your home, your dream, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just here to help you and guide you and be a shoulder throughout the entire process and after. That's, that's a very keen way to say be, be a shoulder available right so mm -hmm. to lean upon awesome well thank you amanda for taking the time here to speak with us um, thank you for amanda's having. contact information will be below same with myself and preach should you guys have any other questions um yeah guys we'll catch you next time thanks for listening thank you guys bye guys <laughs>